His front hallway doesn't have great light. So rather than this, we're going to have this. That's better. I want the light to turn on automatically when the door opens. So I'm going to be installing this motion sensor switch by Eaton right here in the wall. These are the tools I used for this project. More information on them can be found in the show links. I started by laying out the switch location to match the rest of the house. I used a stud finder to make sure there wasn't any framing where I wanted to place the switch. So that the sensor wasn't blocked by the contents, I placed it close to the door jamb. The old work, single gang box, is used as a template for the new opening. After drilling pilot holes at the four corners, a drywall saw creates the opening. I used my Bosch inspection camera to look inside the wall and preview the paths for the new wiring. Next, I moved to the closet ceiling and laid out the light fixture opening. I created a cardboard template from the flimsy paper one provided with the fixture. Then I checked for any framing obstructions. Code requires an LED light to be at least six inches from the closet storage space. Pilot holes and a drywall saw again create the opening. The inspection camera is a very handy tool to find a path for the new wire. It allows me to see there is a 2x4 and some OSB fire blocking where the wall and ceiling meet. I'm going to use this flex bit to drill a hole in the framing member here so that a wire can be ran from the light fixture to the switch box. The flex bit, powered by a drill, creates a hole for the wire. The inspection camera makes it much easier to thread the wire into the new hole. I did edit out quite a few failed attempts. This approach, made possible with the camera, avoids having to cut numerous holes in the drywall, which then need to be patched, so that you can run the wire inside the wall and ceiling. Now that we have the wire pulled to the switch box from the ceiling fixture, we are going to need to pull power from this existing receptacle. Always turn off the power on the circuit. Always use a voltage detector to confirm there's no electricity. This is the source of power to the new switch and light fixture. So a new 14 gauge two wire line will be ran from this box to the new switch. After removing the existing receptacle, I'm going to install a new tamper resistant one, which better protects against electrical shock. The new 14 2 wire with non metallic sheathing is fed into the box. The sheathing is removed and the insulation is stripped from the ends of the wires. See the show notes for links to the products used in this video. I'm going to be using WAGO connectors with levers rather than the common wire nuts. What I especially like about the WAGO connectors is the levers which lock the wire in place can be released to remove each wire individually. I'm adding pigtails to the receptacle which lead to the WAGO connectors. The typical sequence is to first connect the ground wires, then the white neutral wires, and then the hot or load wires, which are black.
After the connections are made and checked to be secure, the wires are fit inside the box and the receptacle is then attached to the box. The switch installation is next. First, the old work box has the wire lead from the receptacle ran through the self-clamping hole in the back of the box. Then the same is done with the wire that will carry power to the light fixture. The box is anchored to the drywall. The sheathing is removed to about half an inch from the cable clamps. After stripping about one half inch from the wire ends, the switch is connected. Again, following the sequence of grounds, neutrals, and loads. Always follow the wiring diagrams provided with the device. I apologize for the poor camera placement here. The black lead from the receptacle attaches to the black and orange wires on the switch. The red relay out wire on the switch connects to the black wire to the light. The blue wire isn't used in this configuration, so it is capped with a wire nut. The wires are fit into the box and the switch device is anchored to the box. I set the light level and then the time delay so the light automatically turns off after five minutes. I'm using these face plates which snap on from Eaton so that you don't have any exposed screw heads. Now we're ready to connect the LED light fixture. The knockout is removed and then a wire clamp is attached. After removing some sheathing and the insulation from the wire ends, it is fed through the loosened clamp. To my pleasant surprise, the fixture came with push-on WAGO connectors. The wires are fit into the box and the lid snaps shut. The clamp screws are tightened to firmly secure the wire to the box. The box is placed inside the opening. Next, the light is attached to the box. It's a little tricky to push in the spring-loaded clamps and place the back of the fixture into the hole without snagging the wire lead. After turning the power back on, I use an outlet tester to ensure the wiring is correct. Then I trim out the receptacle with an Eaton snap-on plate. I'm going to do a quick test and see if everything's working properly. Now the light shouldn't turn on when the door swings out, but it should kick on once there's motion detected moving into the closet. Seems to work pretty well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and also please consider subscribing. Thank you.